Hi, and welcome to another Bag and Board Bites. I'm Paul, and right now I'm talking about Animal Man number one, written by Jeff Lemire, art by Travel Foreman, with coloring by Dan Green. It's important for me to mention the colorist this time because there's just a nice muted quality to this art that I really enjoy. It's almost like shelf, shelf shading, shading for the comic book world. It's easier to say when you don't drink. But uh, what I have enjoyed about the Animal Man run that Grant Morrison did back when it was a Vertigo book was this was a superhero that had a family. And this starts off with Buddy Baker, uh, Buddy Baker being a family man. He's at home. His wife is getting dinner ready. He's helping out setting the table. He's talking to his two kids. And by the end of the book, after saving a hospital uh, from a hostage situation, it turns right to, uh, back around to become all about the family, especially his daughter, who apparently has some weird connection to the superpowers he also has. If you don't know Buddy Baker, Animal Man, he can connect to what is called the Red, which enables him to tap into any of the powers or abilities that any animal possesses. Let's say he gets cut in half. Oh no! Oh, he just taps into the power of a worm and he's able to regenerate himself. Let's say he wants to fly. He taps into an eagle and soars away. Pretty fun. Guy toning a gun on him, just channels the powers of a dog to bark and to freak him out while channeling also the powers of a rhino to storm his ass and punch him into a wall. That happens in this book, by the way. And he says that he channels the power of a dog to bark just to freak people out, which is fun. It's a different mix of the powers. It's an animal man that's in complete control, which is something different. But this book gets really creepy with bleeding eyes. But that's not the creepiest panel in this book. Oh no, the real book comes at the very end with a daughter, Maxine, who just wants a pet. A dead pet. Um, if you want to find a comic book that has a superhero trying to balance a family life and a superhero career and an acting career, stuntman career, and an active, uh, animal activist career all together, you're not going to find it unless you're reading Animal Man number one. I think this was the strongest book out of this week for the DCU number ones. It was a strong mix of creepiness, superhero, and family drama. I liked it. I hope you did too. If not, or if you did and you agree, are there points that you want to bring up that I didn't? Send me an email. Contact at